and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Well, here is another video about seven. It can be challenging to say everything that you want to say in one video. In this case, I had forgotten to add some things that I wish would have made it in my last upload about seven. So I just decided to make a shorter upload with those clips that didn't make it. And while I'm at it, I also threw in some other things that need to be talked about. So, for those of you that had seen my last upload, then you probably remember me mentioning on how I believe that Seven is really just a secular rapper that just happened to tap into the Christian rap to increase his chance of being more successful. not even think it didn't even cross your mind that you was going to be a Christian rapper and be a millionaire. That wasn't even a realistic thing. Now it could really happen. And so you got a lot of people coming up in this, bro, and, and that's really the motive. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you see it in, in even the way that music has gotten very worldly. I mean, you can tell like these dudes are a lot of these dudes are getting their inspiration from worldly artists, but claiming that the Holy Spirit inspired them to do that. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Um, so I just think like we got to be careful as a church what we're asking for like do you know what's going to happen if mainstream record labels start realizing how much money could be made from Christian rap Not even think it didn't even cross your mind that you was gonna be a Christian rapper and be a millionaire. 
I wasn't even a realistic thing. Now, it could really happen. Okay, so now Seven is getting ready to tell you about how there are Christian rappers slash Christian hip hop ministries that are having these fake testimonies and learning just a few scriptures to kind of get by to deceive everyone. But like seven, who's telling you that their testimony is false? Like, can you drop some names? Like, who's doing that? Because I can't envision anyone admitting that or going to you and be like, hey, I totally faked my Christian testimony. I I uh, don't have any knowledge or desire to be a man of God. But I'm here as a Christian rapper to make money and get fame and have everybody glorify me. But but yeah, I'm like, you know what, y'all? I'm telling you, there is a lot of narcissist in the position of authority or men of God and women too. And I'm telling you, they love the accolades, the attention. Um, the easy money and the manipulation, the game. I'm telling you, they there's so much deceptions. And I'm telling you, those type of positions are like magnets to narcissist people. They crave that that uh desire to be worshipped. But they know they can't outright tell you that. So they got to kind of use God as their cover. But indirectly, they're getting the glory. And they're trying to act like they're humble and try to act like they are giving glory to God. And they're saying all the right things that, you know, most of us want to hear, but they're not living it. They're hypocrites. They're double minded. They never do what they say they're going to do. They preach all this, oh, holiness and righteousness, but yet they're living like the devil and you can just see it, but you have to have a discerning mind and a desire to know the truth. But I'm telling you, a lot of these people, people are narcissists and I hope you guys look this up because I'm telling you they are running a lot of these churches on television churches and on YouTube bro they're gonna be doing what they did when they found that out about gangster rap they went and found corny cats who not really from this life made up fake stories put a costume on them bro you know what I'm saying and threw them out here and, and now you got kids running around trying to be like that dude. Well, imagine that, bro, for, for Christ, though. Imagine if, if they was getting cats who have absolutely no relationship with God, teaching them some scripture, giving them a fake church background. And we're dumb enough to eat it all up because we do it now anyway. And then that's going to be the dudes representing. So this right here is called projection. And if you're dealing with a narcissist, it's going to be a very, very common theme. And what I mean by projection is a narcissist will put onto you what they're actually doing or they'll say you have a problem when it actually belongs to the narcissist the person in your life hey your parents were terrible you had a terrible mom a terrible dad and a terrible home life when in all actuality it was a narcissistic person that had exactly what they just accused you of having and projection happens a lot of times in toxic narcissistic relationships, y'all. It, ju it just does. It's one of the ways that a narcissist will kind of confess to you because they'll project some stuff out of the blue. Hey, why are you? Where you going? Are you? Where you leaving the house for? Are you, are you? Are you cheating on me? You're like literally just going to the store or something like that, or going to the gym. They'll be like, like projection sometimes is confession. So sometimes a narcissist projections are just happen to be, you know, that person's confessions. They they're confessing to you by accusing you of it. If you're dealing with a narcissist or a toxic person, whatever they're accusing you of, kind of look deeper into it. Let's talk about narcissist projection. So Sigmund Freud theorized that projection is a defense mechanism. 
if you read about projection, not all projectors are uh, narcissists. Uh, a lot of them are abusers, though. However, however, what projection is, is when there's something inside of you that you don't like or you can't handle, you can't cope with, you'll project it onto someone else because you're looking at it in third person now. Though, whether you believe it or not, a narcissist knows their flaws because people tell them all the time. So they have an accumulation of what their flaws are and things that they don't like about themselves. But they won't take accountability or responsibility of their own flaws and they'll put them onto someone else. So they'll project their bad behavior or their thoughts onto you. They blame others for their shortcomings. They blame others for their failures. They blame others for their behaviors, their mishaps. Because they refuse to take accountability or responsibility of their own behavior and their own thoughts. Because then they will be flawed. And how dare you tell me that I'm not perfect. It's not me that has the problem. It's all of you that have the problem. You'll also notice this in people that have borderline personality disorder, abusers and narcissists. And then the common person that doesn't have any personality disorders. That's why I always tell people, if you pay attention to what they're saying, they'll tell you exactly what they're thinking or what they're doing. Remember, you are a big projector screen. And on that big projector screen, that narcissist projects all their thoughts. Just imagine the projector and all the movie is playing on that screen. And for some people, you take responsibility and accountability for what they put on that screen. That is your, not your life. That is not your thoughts. And those are not your mood or your actions or your words. So it's not your responsibility to take responsibility of something that doesn't belong to you. They lack emotional intelligence. They mimic emotions. And they refuse to take accountability and responsibility of anything. Because if they do, they're peasants just like we are. With flaws. So, Gennaro, how do you feel about Kanye and Kirk Franklin doing a song together? Especially after Kirk Franklin is quote-unquote losing his religion after going to Africa and seeing that a lot of Christianity themes and principles had a lot of similarities to Egyptian and African deities and stuff like that. Well, for those who don't know, I used to tour with all them gospel cats. I don't know if that you know holds any weight or validity to my opinion, but I used to be around Kirk Franklin. I used to actually date his sister-in-law. So me and Kirk Franklin then been in the same room on many occasions. And I'm gonna speak from a personal standpoint and I'm gonna speak from a standpoint of just from the outside looking in. Any people in the gospel industry, they not Christian. They're not Christian. When you sign that con when you sign that contract, people in the gospel industry they ain't Christian. When you sign that contract at the table smoking cigars, they ain't talking about Jesus. They talking about how much money we gonna make. That's what they talking about. So if Kirk Franklin wanna do a song with Kanye West, get that money. That's what I got to say. situations, you know what I'm saying, that led me to the Father, and uh, I had a gift of rap, you feel me, and um, my homeboys, uh, the Cannoli Brothers, scooped me up, signed me, you know, fresh out of high school, graduated at 17, um, and uh, they put me on, you know what I'm saying, into the little gospel rap thing, and uh, I moved to Florida, you feel me, trying to get out of all this nonsense that was going on around me at the time, and um, I went out there, you know, got a chance to tour with a lot of 
big people, you feel me, like Kirk Franklin, uh, Gospel Gangsters, Mary Mary, you feel me, uh, did a couple shows with Alvin Slaughter, DC Talk, and all them, and um, being young and dumb, made a couple, you know, made some bad financial decisions, made some bad uh, contractual decisions, you know what I'm saying, the whole camp really did, and um, I ended up getting off the label. If you just now finding out that Christianity is like Egyptian culture and things of that nature and you want to lose your religion, that's fine. That's beautiful. More power to you. Do your thing, Kirk Franklin. But to me, Kirk Franklin was never a Christian, if you ask me. That nigga just an artist. He just a nigga that do gospel music and say Jesus on his record. Them niggas live just like everybody else. Jay-Z, Jeezy, and Kirk Franklin. And T.I. and all them niggas live the same. They drive the same car, the same hoes. They do the same shit. So what difference do it make? That nigga want to do a song with Kanye West? Fine. Who am I to judge? Um, I believe that you shouldn't profess things that you really don't. How can I say it? Understand. Not, not just understand, but I mean, he been saying he a gospel artist for so long, you know what I'm saying? But I've been to Kirk Franklin wanted to do secular, he's fascinated with secular music. So he should have been doing secular music if you ask me. I don't know what he's doing, listening. See, the record companies, they're a trip. This is what they do. If they can't find fit for you, if you want to be a secular artist and they can't find fit for you in a secular market, then what they do is they make you a gospel artist. See what I'm saying? That's what happened with Tone. Tony, everybody found out he was gay. He finally came out the club and, uh, you know, he started doing secular music. He should have been doing secular music. You can't do secular music and then just stick Jesus' name on it and then call it gospel. You feel what I'm saying? You can't do that, but that's what they've been doing. What's the difference? Music is music. You say what you want to say. I used to do gospel rap and I do secular rap. Who cares? It's all music. It all has a meaning. It's how you feel at that time. At the time, Kirk Franklin was feeling like this the reason why we sing Thank You Jesus. Now that nigga feeling like, you know, forget the church. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that's how that nigga feel, you a grown ass man. Controversial, you know what I'm saying? I know you you've spoke on this before or whatever. So, you know, um, <clears throat> how do you, would you address somebody that's that's saying that you know, especially what you do in gospel or Christian rap, or what, do you even call yourself a Christian rapper? Not at all. Not okay, at all. that's something that I don't really, I don't agree with that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm a rap artist, no different than anybody else. You feel what I'm saying? I think people put these categories on it. You know, I'm a Christian man. You feel what I'm saying? That has an art in rap music. You feel what I'm saying? Not every song I do is about Jesus. Not every song that I do is about the hood. Not every... I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm an artist. I, I, I express myself through the art of rap music. You feel what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'm just not feeling this whole, like, oh, we're gospel and you're secular and this is this and this is that and all that. I mean, that's like, man, be a light. You feel what I'm saying? There's a whole lot of cats in this gospel industry that have no business being here. You know what I'm right. saying? There's cats in the secular industry, quote unquote, you feel me, that serve God. You know what I'm saying? So I mean it's it's kinda like all these all these labels, I mean who's policing it? You feel what I'm saying? Like what if you're gonna if you're gonna have something right here, then there's gotta be something that says, Okay, this is it and this ain't, you know what I'm saying? And there ain't none of that really going on, so you feel me? I think all it does is just alienate us from this group over here that's really, you know what I'm saying, on a whole nother level, sound wise, artistry wise, you know what I'm saying, budget wise, and all that, you feel me? And I think that we need to kind of just, I mean, I, I love cats that's doing their thing, you feel me? 
Now, I know that some people would probably argue that Seven was very young in this interview, but I assure you that this Seven and this older version of Seven are still the same guys. He hasn't changed. The only thing that has changed is his game. His game is polished. But I'm telling you, this is the same guy. And I know some of you supporters and followers are going to say that people change. And that is true. But it's only true when it's true. You know, I know so many people, even in their youth, when they were adolescents, that have grown up to be the same exact people that they were when they were younger. They haven't changed. They still lie. They still cheat. They still uh, take things that aren't theirs. They still are selfish. You still can't trust them with nothing. They're still very immature. They're the same people, but they're just in a grown-up version. But they still have that, that same mindset as when they were younger. So I'm telling you, this seven and the older seven are the same exact people another thing that i would like to bring up that is blasphemous is seven's music video where he is picking up a bible throwing it in the trash putting gasoline on it and setting it afire. So I don't care if this is a video uh, for entertainment or whatever reasons that he has for doing that. You don't do that to the Bible, to the word of God. That's going way too far. And it runs on the lines of them putting little lasers on the Bible, thinking that that was some cool, clever thing. I'm telling you, seven in hog mob they're very disrespectful to the lord and i'm telling you they're not from god and that's why they're blinded that's why they're in delusion and that's why all you followers of theirs are also in delusion actually i think you guys are under some sort of witchcraft of all the little devil hand signs that they keep uh putting up and, and they're saying oh it, it means love it means h uh for hog mob you know i'm telling you they keep doing that and i think that's putting witchcraft on y'all every time y'all keep watching their little videos their little satanic videos that's what i believe is happening there and they throw they keep throwing up those hand signs all the time like they got Tourette of the hands they can't stop doing it so you're gonna tell me every time you do the that little I love you hand sign that means I love you you do it like every other minute so that doesn't even make sense I would like to speak more about seven's symbolism that he has if you look at his neck he has a tattoo of the Cairo. So my point to bringing that up is that Seven knows about symbols. He's not going to put that on his neck without researching what that is. And he is from a gang. They all communicate with themselves through symbolisms and their hand signs. So you know they're also going to research what all these symbols mean. Again, that's how they all communicate with each other. And Seven knows that most of his followers are not going to catch this. Because if they're not from the gang. See everyone that watches his uh, music videos that are from a gang or have a gang background. They all can see what Seven is doing. But the majority of Seven's audience don't know that. They miss all those hand signs that he does in his videos and all the other symbolisms that he does in his videos or pictures or whatever else. And he banks on that. And that's why he gets away with so much. And he knows full well that that hand sign does not mean I love you. Now, a lot of people have told Seven that his hand sign is the hand sign for the devil they told him so much 
on so many times that he has written a post about it. He has made videos about it. So he knows that a lot of people feel uncomfortable with his hand signs. And why would Seven continue to do the hand sign when he sees it makes so many Christians uncomfortable? But see, he's a rebellious person. He doesn't care. He doesn't care how it makes you feel or or where it came from. And he even wrote that in his post. He doesn't care where where the origins comes from or if it came from the enemy or if it, or gangs. That's basically what he was saying in this post. He said he's going to make it mean what they want it to mean in hog mob. And that's that is my whole point as well. He's very rebellious and he doesn't care what anybody else thinks of what he's doing he's going to do it regardless see a lot of people will think oh well did you go to seven and talk to him first no i'm not going to talk to him first he knows what he's doing and all his other people that's with his ministry knows what he is doing so no i'm not going to pull him aside when he's purposely doing this this next symbol is the pyramid. And I know that Seven did this on purpose, had this man be in this pyramid. And as I already mentioned before, Seven knows about symbols. I'm telling you, he does. He's well versed on them, what the meaning is. He knows about hand signs. He knows all about this stuff. And he even has it for this picture here where it says, study it for yourself. He still has that pyramid there as well so i know he knows this seven and hog mob have also received criticism for the hog now my question is why are you going to make a shirt with the pig on it with one of his eyes missing if you guys talk about you have the hog because it's strong and manly and that's the face of your ministry then why is he missing an eye because usually in animation or in cartoons, having a cross on both eyes or one eye normally indicates that that thing is dead or wounded. So why would you place an X right there on his eye? That doesn't make a bit of sense. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Seven is is mocking y'all. That he's, I'm telling you, he's not a Christian. He He's totally playing y'all. And I really wish that y'all would wake up. Do y'all also remember, those of you that saw my part one about Seven, remember how I talked about this young man and how I felt like he was doing like a subtle um, devil hand sign very subtly. Now, I also came across this picture where this guy is obviously giving us the bird. And I even gave y'all a closer shot. You see how Seven is playing games? I'm telling you, this whole thing is just a game to him. And that's how narcissists are. They love games. They manipulate. They love playing the role. And I'm telling you, this is what Seven's doing. He's playing all of you Christians. I'm just praying y'all, please wake up. And lastly, I want to talk about this shirt. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Does that look like a godly shirt? That looks like it is totally demonic. And if you were to ask just a regular person if they thought that this was a godly shirt, I assure you the percentage of people would say absolutely not. So come on, y'all. We uh, that There is no uh, excuse for getting around that one. It looks demonic. You know what I'm saying? It's the same way I look at what's happening with gospel uh, rap music right now, or even the gospel music industry in general. It's become disgusting to me. You know what I'm saying? To see all that was fought and, and, and what this, the beautiful tool that this is and the effectiveness that it has when it's used properly. You know what I'm saying? But to see this beautiful bride, it, it, they trying to turn her into such a whore. Many hip hop Christian rap ministries will always say that their music is used as a tool to draw the lost in. But I'm going to play a clip where Seven says that the people that listen to his music and buy his music are still listening to like Lil Wayne. The church has a lot of power and you got to understand we 
we, what drives what drives the, the Christian? Um, love for God. You know, the desire to see Him glorified, right? Well, what drives the world is love for self and desire to see yourself satisfied, gratified, and glorified. Money, man. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say that the church has a lot to do with the fact that you don't see a lot of gospel artists doing major venues and stuff because especially on the, especially in the rap genre. Now you see see like in praise and worship and stuff, well they be packing out stadiums. Why? Because there's that huge corporate support for that genre of music. But over here, man, like I said, bro, you still got probably eighty percent of our fan base will buy my CD and then turn around and buy Lil Wayne's CD. So it's like there's still so much compromise on this side. So my question is, what type of audience, like, are you really bringing people to God? Because my whole point to talking about these hip hop rapping ministries is that they're not having a good harvest. Yeah, they're going out on the streets. They're they're going to place to place. But are they giving a good harvest or is their harvest not flourishing? Because that's the whole point of this. What's the point? Actually, what's the point going out there if you're not teaching them how to be really for God, for, for Christ? You're basically letting them know, hey, just accept Jesus and you're good, man. Try not to kill as much. Try not to do this as much. Try not, you know, ease up. But, but that's they have that easy believism when they go out there and they think oh well I saw them pray we prayed with them so we brought them to Christ no you don't know that because there's many false converts there's going to be a lot of people that says Lord Lord didn't we do this didn't we raise our hands didn't we pray didn't we there are going to be all kinds of things that are going to be said I guarantee you that but they're not making a good harvest and that's my point just like joel osteen and td jakes and cleflo dollar and all the other ministries like that they have a large following but that doesn't mean that they have a good harvest because look at what they're teaching these people so they're not having that good harvest as i already mentioned so now i'm not saying that nobody under them is not saved and there's a lot of people that come out of that and realize that those type of ministries are false. But my point is, is just because these guys are going to the jails or going to the streets does not mean that they are teaching them, them the right ways of God. Notice how it said angels, and this is why I say that the Holy Spirit is definitely an angel, which makes it a part of the Elohim, which is why I say the Holy Spirit is God, because I believe that the angels are God in position. God is not a being. God is a position. The Holy Spirit, I believe, is an angel, but I don't believe you could point to which angel. I believe whichever one that he chooses to send, is the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of Truth in that regard? Because Yeshua said, when He comes, He shall not speak of Himself. He will only say what He, what I tell Him to say. And because He has no name or nothing, I'm not taking away from the idea of it being a being. But I don't believe that being is one particular one. I believe whoever He sends is the Holy Spirit. I don't believe there's one particular one called the Holy Spirit. A lot of people have a misconception about these rapping hip hop ministries because they think that they're all going around for free doing all of this work that they showcase. And a lot of times it's not true. People are paying them to be there. Now, it may be free to the public, but I assure you they're still getting paid. They're not going to travel across the country or wherever for free. And they're not going to be on stage singing and dancing and being entertainers for free. That's not how they run things, even though they want to kind of make it seem like they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They're not going to come to your church or wherever unless they have a paycheck most times. So I just want to 
tell you guys that just because they plaster oh it's free event free event that does not mean they themselves aren't getting paid Ephesians 5 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Another thing that I have noticed about Seven is that he is so attracted to death and darkness. I mean, everything on his page just oozes that. And there's very rare pockets of light that he shows on his channel or on his website. Everything is about blood and death and guns and violence. I mean, and God, that does not represent God. And 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 I know a lot of y'all be like, oh, he's just talking about his testimony. And that's fine. But daggone, he talks about his testimony in every single song, every little album, every community post. I mean, everything is his testimony, 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 testimony. When are you going to talk about Jesus? When are you going to talk about coming out of that and being light? Everything is just so dark. You know, another thing I noticed is that that Seven never answers his comments on his YouTube. And if he does, it's extremely rare. But one person had Satan as in their profile as a DJ. And that comment was the only comment I remember him ever answering, saying, hey, we need some DJs. Um, But, but the, like I said, the profile had Satan in it. I'm, I'm telling you, he is so obsessed with darkness and even his clothes even his apparel clothes reflect that and he's got satan on his shirt i can't even believe that anybody would even want to wear that out in public and especially a born again believer we're not supposed to be having satan plastered on our hats and on our shirts and socks and phone cases and mugs we're supposed to have God. We're supposed to advertise the light, not showcase the darkness and give the devil's airtime. That's not how it's supposed to be. But with seven, because he still has all that clogged up in his heart, that's why he still talks about it. And he's constantly talking about it in his lyrics. And it's like graphic stuff. And a lot of, I've had people uh, on my last video be like, oh, you just don't understand. You're not from that world. And it's part of his testimony. But I'm sorry. He does not need to be talking graphic about things that he has done. I mean, that's like a prostitute who got saved by God and now she's making music, giving a play by play of what she did in the bedroom with the Johns, her clients and what they did to her. And she's giving all the details. Like, do we need to hear that as part of her testimony? No, we don't. And just the same thing with seven. We don't need to hear about you cutting the veins and jugulars of people and hanging puppies in the closet and laughing when they're crying and having your guts and, and, and putting them on the wall and gouging people's eyes out. Like we don't need, who needs to hear that? That is sick. That is some sick stuff. And the fact that your followers still, oh my goodness, they still take up for you with hearing that. Man, you guys need to really do a heart evaluation and really, really ask yourself if you're truly in the faith. (laughs) 
I would like to speak further about Seven's ministry logo. Now, for those that had watched my part one, then you probably will remember this next clip of a hog mob member explaining why they chose the hog for the face of their ministry. Hog mob members really build up this logo. Just like your football team, the Raiders, the the Lions, the the Patriots, whoever, they have a strong mascot or a strong mascot for their team. And so Hog Mob, which is an acronym that stands for Hooked on God, Ministry Over Business, we have a mascot for it. It's a, a hog, strong, manly hog. And so that's that's what's up with that. I know that a lot of people, including Seven, will argue that their hog logo is not the typical average pig. But by definition, they are. They are considered swine. The variety of pigs are no different than when you speak about the differences of any breeds. Like, let me give you an example. The German Shepherds, the Yorkies the Dobermans and the Labradors, they may have different breeds, but they're all still considered dogs. And that also applies to the breed of pigs. Plus, Seven already knows that the pigs is not a good reference for anything. Here he is calling a cop a pig in his lyrics in a derogatory way so seven knows full well that that choice of the pig the hog was and is blasphemous to god not Not many many of you you should should become become teachers my my fellow fellow believers. believers Because Because you know that that we who teach will be judged more strictly. James 3, 1.